In part one of our lesson on parametric equations, we will do an algebra review. First, let's review how to complete the square. A binomial in the form x squared plus bx can be turned into a perfect square trinomial by adding the quantity 1 half b squared. An important note is that the leading coefficient must be 1 for this method to work. And remember, the leading coefficient is the coefficient of the x squared term. So the coefficient of the x squared has to be 1 in order for adding this constant to work. Let's look at an example now where we have to complete the square but do not solve the equation. We just want to review right now the process of completing the square. In this first equation, we will want to take the plus 67, throw it on the right-hand side as a negative 67, and then let's go ahead and factor out the 5 so that the leading coefficient will be a 1. So we will have 5 times x squared plus 8x, and I'm going to purposely leave some space here and then close the parenthesis. So now we will add this constant term where we take half of b and square it. And in this case, the b is equal to 8, so we are going to take 1 half of 8, which is 4, and square that to get 16. So then that means the constant term we add here is plus 16. Now we have to counteract that on the right-hand side, but we have to be very careful because it's not really 16 that we added. Really, it is 5 times 16 that we added. So on the right-hand side, we have to put plus 5 times 16. When we simplify, we get 5 times the quantity x plus 4 squared is equal to, we have negative 67 plus 80, so that's going to be 13 on the right-hand side. So the process that we just did here is called completing the square. Let's take a look at this next equation. Let's have you go ahead and try this one. So pause the video, work this example on your own, and then restart when you're ready to check. First order of business would be to take this minus 1, throw it over on the right-hand side as a positive 1, factor the 3 out, so we have 3 times x squared minus 5x. We're going to leave some space there. We know that we will need to take 1 half of 5, and square that number. So that is 25 fourths. So inside the parentheses, we will put plus 25 over 4. Now we have to counteract that on the right hand side, but again, remember, it's not 25 fourths that we added, it's going to be 3 times 25 fourths that we added, so that's what we have to do on the right-hand side. To keep our equation balanced, simplifying, we will get 3 
times x minus 5 halves squared is equal to, on the right hand side, 3 times 25 fourths we know is 75 fourths. 75 fourths plus 4 fourths would be 79 fourths. So we've rewritten the equation by completing the square. Next, we will review working with inequalities involving absolute value. If you have an inequality in the form absolute value of x less than a, that expands to negative a less than x less than a. And if you have an inequality in the form absolute value of x greater than a, that expands to two inequalities in an OR statement where x is less than negative a or x is greater than a. So let's work through these two examples here where we have to solve and graph. In this first one we would subtract 2 from both sides so now we have absolute value of x is less than or equal to 5, which is a version of this first type. So we know that that will expand to negative 5 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 5. Now the graph of that, we would plot negative 5 and positive 5 and because x has to be between those two we put the hard bracket because it's a less than or equals to and we draw our line in between and then put a hard bracket on the right hand side at the positive 5. So there's a hard bracket at the negative 5, a hard bracket at the positive 5 and that's because of these less than or equals and we shade in everything in between. In this next example, we also have to solve and graph. We have negative 2 times the absolute value of x is less than or equal to negative 6. So the first step will be to divide both sides by negative 2, and we will get absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 3, because dividing or multiplying by a negative causes us to reverse the inequality symbol. Now this inequality that we got is in the form of the second type here. So that means that it becomes two inequalities with an OR statement. So this means we have x is less than or equal to negative 3 or x is greater than or equal to positive 3. So in our graph, we plot a negative 3, we plot a positive 3. We have to use hard brackets because it is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, but x has to be less than or equal to negative 3, it means we put the hard bracket there and the arrow going this way, so we shade this way. x being greater than or equal to 3 means we put a hard bracket here and shade the arrow going this way. So that's just a quick review of inequalities involving absolute value. Here is a quick reminder about the slope-intercept form of a line. The equation of the line will look like y equals mx plus b, where m is equal to the slope. So m is the coefficient of the x term. 
the constant term b helps us find the y-intercept which will be 0 comma b. In this first example we have to graph y equals 2 fifths x. So this tells us that the y-intercept is going to be 0, 0 because there's no constant term here. So we know that that is a point on the graph. And then from there we can use the slope which we know to be 2 fifths. Because the slope is 2 fifths that tells us to go up by 2, 1, 2, and to the right by 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that will have to be another point on the graph. Then to draw the line, we just connect the two points. And there's the graph of y equals 2 fifths x. Let's have you try this next example. So pause the video and graph y equals negative 3x plus 2. Then restart it when you're ready to check your answer against mine. We know the y-intercept here is going to be 0, 2, so we can put that point in. The slope is equal to negative 3, which is the same as negative 3 over 1. So this tells you that from this point, we will go down by 3, 1, 2, 3, and to the right by 1, 1. Put a point there. And now we can draw our line. So there's the graph of y equals negative 3x plus 2.